Hey there everyone, welcome back. So in this example, we'll be covering the conservation of angular momentum using the, the typical um, example of a rotating object, which is a merry-go-round that you might find in a, a public park or, or at a, a carnival. So the problem situation, what I've, in other words, what I've drawn here is two different views of this, this merry-go-round. What we have is a side view and a top view. Okay, we have a person standing on the edge at a distance of six meters from the center, right? So the radius, in other words, of this merry-go-round or carousel is six meters. The problem is, or, or the question to be solved is, if this person were to walk towards the center by a distance of three meters, such that they'll end up at half the radius from the center, uh, what will be the final angular speed of the system, right? And I say the system because this the final omega for the person and the, the merry-go-round will be the same, right? In other words, they're not going to slip or slide on the surface. Okay, so what will the final omega be? So I should state the mass of the merry-go-round, 200 kilograms, the mass of the person is 100 kilograms, and we want to end up, say, right here. R final equals 3. And put that as R initial. Okay. And finally, it's initially rotating omega naught 0.2 revolutions per second. Okay. So it starts out. Kind of rotating around like that we can say that's our initial and then our final is half of that which is three okay so what we have here is a rotational problem about the center of mass okay and i say the center of mass yes i know that there's a person over here so that mass will affect the location of the entire system's center of mass, meaning that the, the merry-go-round is right here, and the, the person will push it over just a little bit. But for this purpose, the center of mass of the system will call the center of the, the merry-go-round itself. Okay, So there's no effective shift. Um, let's see. Because of that fact, the conservation of angular momentum can be written as I omega. And initially, we have that for both objects. We have the initial moment of inertia for the disk, which I'll write as ID, and omega naught, plus the moment of inertia for the person, which I'll, I guess I'll write as IP, times that same omega naught, okay? And this is the total angular momentum for the system. Afterwards, right, once that person reaches three meters from the center, uh, we have basically the same expression. We have I for the disk times the final omega plus I for the person times that same final omega, right? So far, so good. We don't have to do R cross P for L, either initially or finally, because of the fact that the system is rotating through the center of mass, okay? And that's important. Basically, we have a rotation, right? and it's helpful even more so because it's from the center or about the center. So, what are we trying to find? Omega final. It's right there and right there. So, let's see. We need the expression for the moment of inertia of a solid disk. Okay, so ID. Um, tell you what, let me pull out omega a little bit. So, the moment of inertia for a disk if you look back in your table, should be one-half 
mr squared. So let's put that in for ID. Right, 1 half times the mass times the radius of the disk, which is r, what I said was initial. So that's squared. Since I took out the omega for right now, I am, I'm adding the moment of inertia for the person, which in this case we can consider a point particle right at the edge of that disk. Um, so that's basically mass, lowercase m, times r initial squared. And now the initial omega naught, I'm not plugging in numbers yet. Okay. And then it looks like I might run out of room. I'm going to try. Equals the angular momentum afterwards. So afterwards, the well, the disk hasn't changed shape or anything. So ID initially and ID finally is the same. It still has its radius of Ri. Um, I'm going to factor out the final omega. So now I'm adding I for the person finally, right? That means it's M times R final squared. And then uh, omega final. Okay. So we can't cancel anything out. I don't believe we can. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to solve for omega final, right? So basically divide by this entire parenthesis. And so I'm going to plug in some numbers now. So we have 1 half times the mass of, right, the capital M, the mass of the carousel, 200. The radius of the carousel, which is 6 meters squared, so that's 36 plus this term now, the mass of the person, which I said was 100, uh, times 36. Whoops. All of that times the initial omega naught, which was the point 0.2. Oh, do you see a potential hiccup here? Potential hiccup. I have it in terms of revolutions per second. Okay, revolutions per second. You can change that to radians per second now to make it SI units in your equation if you want to. Okay, however, if you leave it in revolutions per second, you'll get a final omega in terms of revolutions per second which you can then change to radians per second if you wanted to, okay? I'm going to leave it as revolutions per second, but just pay attention if your homework or, or, or lab wants it in radians per second, now is the time to change it. Otherwise, leave it in, in revs per second. So now we're dividing by the term on the right. So one half times 200 times the initial, so that's not changing, plus the human um, times the final distance, which is 3 squared, so that's 9. Okay, so I should have everything now, and if we evaluate, uh, we should get a value of, uh, let me check my notes, let me check my notes, where is it? There it is. 0 0.32, 0 0.32 revolutions per second, right, for the final angular speed. And note that that value increased from what was initially, right? It increased. Uh, how much? By like 50% at least. So it sped up. Why did it speed up? Because more mass was now located closer to the rotational axis. And that means that, that it's easier. It's easier for that person plus the, the merry-go-round to rotate. Right? The more mass that's closer to this 
central axis, the easier it is to rotate about that axis. Thus, that means that it's going to rotate faster. Okay? So, and that's what we see. And that comes from the fact that angular momentum is conserved, right? I omega initially equals I omega finally for all particles or all objects involved. Okay? With that, thanks for watching.